So in the early hours of uh, July 31, 2012, the inhabitants of Moragaon, which is a fishing village in Mumbai, were wakened by the presence, the looming presence of a tanker, MV Pawith. Um, the Coast Guard cast this event as a breach of national security and promised more rigorous marine protocols. For the fish city's fisher communities, the Kohli's, uh, this meant heightened surveillance of coastal waters, increased control over boat licenses, and there was the danger that Pavit would move with the tide and crash into the village. This understanding of breach lines is the direct consequence of India's coastal, pol uh, coastal Regulatory Zone Policy, or CRZ, which organizes the coast as a territorial unit where resources can be mobilized and the borders of which can be secured and controlled. The CRZ policy takes, it as a, takes the coast as a land-based, fixable territory that can be divided into zones where resources can be extracted. The main way in which the policy does this is through cartographic surveys that identify ecological elements of interest and fix new boundaries on the shore. So, this subdivision and tight control over the coast allows the government to in implement growth-based policies uh, in a tightly controlled and managed space. To implement the CRZ policies, one of the most important things that has to be done is to identify and demarcate the high tide line. The nature of mapping this line itself has undergone considerable change with changes in survey technology. So in case you have noticed, um, it's become more and more atomized over the course of subsequent notification. So for the most part, the high and low tide lines are established by examining high resolution satellite imagery along with bathymetric and tide, tidal records. This creates the sense that the coast is at once comprehensible and increasingly divisible to a greater and greater degree. This immediacy is linked to new forms of extractive environmental regimes because it allows the eye to atomize the coast as a bundle of resources and as a site of fixed potential. Unlike the CRZ, uh, small-scale nearshore fishing uh, takes the coast as a fluid entity which is sustained by complex uh, interdependencies between humans and non-humans. Nearshore fishing involves a number of improvisational moves that happen in close association with the coast, especially the creek. The beginning and end of the fishing season is marked by changes in the creek's behaviour as it churns with the monsoon and is quieted after the rains. To the fishers, creeks, estuaries and bays offer a measure of protection from the direct action of the sea, places to park their boats, dry their fish and in times when the sea is rough, a place to fish. The CRZ uh, completely overlooks this uh, kind of moving fluid world as it posits an unchanging relation between the fishers and the coastal landscape. It assumes that the creek has an integral, unchanging form. It, an important outcome of this terranean reordering is that it turns the coast into a bounded area that can be disciplined to prevailing policy perspectives, So, which in India's case is just over 2 million square kilometers. So these areas, because the CRZ renders it as areas, these areas become the basis of calculating the potential for the coast and the marine fisheries industry. This is a legacy of the first blue revolution that began in the 1950s when the Indian government initiated a large-scale program to modernize fishing boats to increase the annual yield. Policies like the second blue, blue level revolution, which went from 2015 to 2021, um, translate the area of fishing zones into potential catch. So there's a direct uh, relationship that the policies make between the area that's available fish for fishing and the amount that can be extracted. Because they are less intensive, small scale, small scale fishing practices bring in a smaller uh, annual yield. Unlike the coast of, as a zone of quantified potential, small scale fishers create the coast through interdependencies that work in the long and short term. This should not be taken to mean that small scale fishing lacks technological or economic sophistication or that numbers or quanta are irrelevant. This is kind of like just an inroads to say that, well, we can think of participatory dialogue once policy frameworks have been set, but we can also think of participation and rethinking the coast at the level of formulating what the coast is itself. 